Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday, August 20th and ending Friday the 24th, 2018. Has not been the most exciting week uh, for August. We've been just drifting around here. August so far has gotten us nowhere uh, in the markets. It looked like it was going to get some action the other day when we started to dip, but we've recovered some of that. Still fairly close to the highs. I don't know what else to say. Here's the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart of the broad market and futures form. And note that if I go to projection mode and count Friday's total, there is a 13 sell signal for the first time of 2018, basically. Um, the last one came right before the plunge in uh, January. It was late December. Uh, this is the first one in a while. So what will that mean? We shall see. But we definitely have a seeker sell signal on the ES. Let's go through the major daily charts and then we'll talk about the interweek action look at the news coming out this week which isn't much there's not a lot to help us and then go from there we just finished trip or we just finished options expiration for august so that's over and out of the way here's crude oil 65.92 up 46 cents on friday after pulling back quite a bit remember this thing hit 75 not that long ago gold made new lows for the week but closed up 780 uh to 1191.80 on Friday, the S&P cash index after a small gap down. And by the way, there's also a 13 sell signal here on the cash index. It lays out a little differently. Note, note the 13 buy signal back in April. That was the low. I'm just saying as the market gets in sync with these things, they, right at the beginning of April, we got that uh, 13 buy signal. That was the low. Now we've got a 13 sell signal. It's near the high, so that could definitely be important going forward. But it was up nine for the session. NDX was up all of three points. Um, and we don't have a signal here yet, but we're a couple days up would give you a 13 also on the NDX, and that doesn't happen often, but they both get them socks. Uh, what's interesting here is this one almost has a 13 buy signal on the semiconductors, but look at that last 13 sell signal back in November of last year. Again, the 13 is so powerful when they work. Uh, NASDAQ, uh, bio, I'm sorry, the biotech's down two points. So again, pretty much a flat expiration Friday in August as expected with the S&P up nine, the NDX up three, biotech's down two, Socks up down nine, so everything in single digits. That's what we expected. VIX down 81 cents to 12.64. We still pulled off a nice winner in Baidu on the session, by the way, and the futures were a slight net winner. Uh, the trend closes at 0.6. That's a super low close, but there's some high readings in there, so the 10 day moving average is still 1.21. Uh, and NASDAQ volume this is really startling, actually. 1.85 billion shares on the NASDAQ. That is the lightest volume of the last month. Usually with expiration, you get extra volume that's not real. So you get fake volume instead of no volume. Today we got no volume. That tells you how few open options positions there really were out there. Advanced decline ratio of the NASDAQ plus 395. More stocks up than down on the New York plus 1148. Google loses $8.21, slipping to the lows of the last month. Apple, new highs, up 426. Netflix loses $5.66. That's new lows for the last three months. Amazon down $4.30, just off the highs. Tesla down 29.95, and that's a new low for the last month-ish almost, and very near the lows of the last few months. TLT, the 20-year bond ETF, up 15 cents. Not a big deal. Note that this thing would get a 13 sell signal if it was get, if it could get above that eighth candle. Goldman Sachs up 38 cents. Facebook down 90 cents. Let's take a look at the intra-week action. So I'm going to switch this to 10-minute candles so we can see the whole week. And here's what you got. Monday, slight gap up. You can see the back end of Friday off to the left there. Slight gap up, sold off, closed a little bit negative. Tuesday, slight gap up. Never quite filled the gap, went a little higher, dead flat the rest of the day. Wednesday, gap down, went lower, closed not in the closed mid-range, really. Thursday, gap up, so you left that island, essentially, there, and went higher. Note the 13 sell signal right at the high on Thursday. That drift us into uh, the close, and then Friday, small gap down, basically a flat opening. A couple of times late in the day, we finally drifted up after, even though it was expiration, you don't usually expect that. NASDAQ side closed down for the week, though. A little different than the ES side, but not much net net on either one of them. Uh, so it wasn't overall, I would say, a very exciting week for stocks. Uh, we had a, we had one great day in there, and then you know Friday we still had that Baidu, and I mean, you can't complain making money, but you'd like to see more of it. Monday, just a Fed member speaking. Tuesday, no data. So two days into the week, we got nothing. Wednesday, existing home sales thirty minutes in. Crude oil inventories an hour in. The Fed meeting from the Fed minutes from the last meeting come out at two. Thursday, the weekly initial and continuing jobless claims an hour before the bell. The housing price index 30 minutes before the bell. Flash manufacturing and services PMI numbers 15 minutes in. New home sales 30 minutes in. Natty gas an hour in. Friday, durable goods 
and that's it. That is the week. There's a couple of Fed chair speeches. That's it. So it's not a very interesting week for data. There's nothing that we tend to look to look for. There's no expiration. There's no Fed meeting, and it's a summer in August still. I don't know that we're going to get anything too huge here, but we'll see what happens. Remember, when there's nobody around, the market tends to drift up. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great day.